McNeil out of Vickery, Ohio, will start in the 11th spot. Those are the cars we expect to see to go for the distance of eight laps. This is the King of the 360s, night number one, heat number one. Most of the cars gathering in the back straightaway here. We'll get those push trucks into position. Of course, this being the first of the heat races, we want to make sure that we get everybody out there the way we need them to be. Eight laps the scheduled distance for this one. As there you can see a good look now. The signal being given to push them off. Ben Brown in the 7B, first to go. Reese Nowatowski, Nowatarski right there behind in the 10X will be next to push off. A.J. Maddox setting, waiting for his chance to join the field here. We'll get the cars circulating while the push trucks find their escorts, and then we'll get the cars lined back up. There's the car 24, Christopher Thram. Thram and Thram Farms ride will be lining up in this race in his position inside row two. Next pushed off will be the outside third row car, the car number 16, TH of Kevin Newton. So we'll get these cars moving as still just a couple awaiting their opportunity. We've got uh, the Frank Neal car 88. Set to get pushed off. And we're expecting to see Wayne Johnson also to join us in this field. Garrett Green is mentioned from Dade City, Florida, one of our local racers. Nice shot there of the racetrack activity and now the sun has set here in the south of Tampa, Florida area. Well, these drivers getting ready to go for tonight to try to avoid having to go into the B mains for tonight. 12 lap B mains for those who don't qualify into the A main by way of their heat races. Tonight's feature will be a 30 lap feature for the 360 sprint cars. Remember, fast time in this group was the Eric Riggins Jr. car, who had a time of 16, 133, and then only to see that time get beaten by over two and a half seconds. Pace truck is over in turn four. The rest of the field playing chase the pace truck. They're trying to get up behind that pace truck, and they will do so here in the front straightaway. So apparently the situation is this, the 22M of Sean Murray not answering the call. And they're beginning to shuffle the lineup as Ben Brown is going to go down to the bottom and take the pole position with the car 24T of Christopher Thram. A.J. Maddox will go inside the second row. Brandon Sampson will move from fifth to fourth and start on the outside. Then Newton's going to slide to the left, which you can do in these cars. But then you've got outside of him the car 10X of Reese Nowatarski. So instead of having the 11 cars, we're going to go with five rows of two with Ben Brown and Christopher Thram with the responsibility of leading them back to the starting point. The pace truck is off the racetrack. The field will start to form up behind the 7B and the 24T as we get set to go with the first of our six eight-lap heat events. Green flag is in the air. We are underway on the outside. Thram's going to take advantage going into turn one. It's going to be Brown, but here comes Maddox to the bottom. He's going to take second. Three wide battle in turn. It's actually four wide, and Wayne Johnson gets shuffled out. Johnson's going to limp in with a flat left rear tire. Johnson losing that left rear. Maddox to the inside, challenging Thram for the lead, and Thram on the outside got to hold on. Going to keep the local at bay if he can. Maddox slides up. Contact. Maddox going to take the lead. A.J. Maddox, your leader in the car three. Second place hits the 24T of Christopher Thram. Now you see the challenge coming on. Contact between the 10 and the 96 as Samson trying to get off the racetrack. 
as he did finally make it off there. Your race leader is A.J. Maddox in the car 3A. A lot of activity going on mid-pack here as drivers making some contact. You'll see the 88 of Neal and the 82 of Garrett Green doing battle right there, staying away from each other. Those two are chasing the 16 TH of Kevin Newton. Newton with that 16 TH holding on to the position right now. He is in the bit six spot as Maddox continues to lead the way, ran a 13-4 last lap. Coming down this time, looking at two to go for your leader, A.J. Maddox out of Tampa, Florida. Christopher Thram continues to run second, Ben Brown third, and Eric Riggins Jr. will be fourth. There's Brown in the seven. Riggins has the way to catch him. White flag comes out for A.J. Maddox. Rest of the field rallies around for that white flag. Pretty much no challenges on the racetrack where it means anything. Maddox has gone into three, bouncing his way through turn four. Checkered flag is out, winner of the first heat race. A.J. Maddox in the 3A. Second will go to the car 24 of Christopher Thram. Ben Brown will take third. Eric Riggins fourth and fifth will go to the 10X of Reese Noah Tarski. So making his move down on the bottom, getting things done in heat race number one. You've got the win going to A.J. Maddox of Tampa, Florida. Heat race number two coming your way here in just a couple of minutes from the East Bay Raceway Park Winter Nationals. While the top finishers of the first heat event are going to the pit area for the tech shed, the safety crews in the meantime are going to take care of the problem for the 2C of Wayne Johnson. Johnson involved in a mishap in the early part of the first heat event. Led to him turning in on the back straightaway. It's time to take a look at who we're going to have in the field for the second heat event for tonight's King of the 360s Racing. On the pole, the car number 43M out of Sunbury, Pennsylvania. That is Mark Smith. Outside of him, from Cherryville, North Carolina, Lance Moss. He drives car 23. From Windsor, Colorado, it's the car 6G of Brian Gossel. From Dunville, Ontario's Canadian representative, the 15 car of Ryan Turner. Row 3 will have New York racer in the 21B, Scott Cruder. Matt, Cr Matt Kurtz in car number 92 will race from the sixth starting position. Royersford, Pennsylvania is the hometown of the racing legend from the Keystone State, Steve Buck Buckwalder. He'll go off in the double zero car. You've got Ryan Tim starting eighth from Oklahoma City. Fifth row will have Tyler Pallas from Oshweekan, Ontario, and Keith Sheffer Jr. Sheffer in the 10SR from Jerome, Michigan. Rounding out the field, we'll have the car number three from Sanford, Florida. That's Dennis Miseraka. That's your field of cars, 11 cars strong for tonight's second heat event. Still working on getting that Wayne Johnson car 2C out of the infield right now. Once they're able to make that move, then they can clear the racetrack and bring the second heat event cars around for this activity here tonight. Again, these drivers contesting these heat races to determine who's going to move on into the A main. And now we've got Johnson's car completely off the racetrack, off the ground completely. It looks like you're hauling an Indy car the way they do that. So... He's along for the ride here. We'll take the, take care of the 2C as the veteran competitor. We'll look for our better luck here in the B main. Give him a chance to showcase his talents. You see the three car of Dennis Miseraka, one of our local racers who will be competing in this event. Unfortunately, he's got a tough row ahead of him here as he'll start all the way back in the 11th position. He's ready. he give you that indication right there. He's going to be ready, ready to go racing right there. You'll see Lance Moss in the 23. That's your front row. It's just inverted. Moss is going to end up on the outside rather than inside of Mark Smith when the race gets ready to get underway. But right now, drivers are simply patiently waiting for their chance to get onto the racetrack and begin their parade laps around the racetrack. 
Wayne Johnson's car 2C did not complete a single lap, so he will be down in the books, and he'll be starting deep in the B features when that time comes here. Second of six of the preliminary events for tonight's racing program. This is night number one. Tomorrow night, the regular scheduled Friday program will be contested on Thursday with the calculation of the points from tonight and tomorrow night setting the stage for the lock-in on Friday. That's right, Friday is the final night, not Saturday anymore. The field has been now given instruction. They can make their way around this racetrack if they have a push truck behind them, and some of them do, so they are on their way around. Begin circulating in preparation for the second heat event for tonight's King of the 360s. Tyler Pallas, Oshweekan, Ontario racer. The Oklahoma racer Ryan Timms in the 5T. Still a couple more cars in the back straight away. There's the Lance Moss car. Lance competed in the high limit racing events on Monday and Tuesday here. Looking to see what he can do with this activity for the remaining part of the week, giving these racers a chance to race five nights in a row. Cherryville, North Carolina. There's our second Ontario representative. They both ended up in the same heat, it seems like. Ryan Turner's car 15, part of the Nitro 54 team. This is Brian Gossel. Brian Gossel again in the 6G. As we mentioned, there will be a G6. This is the 6G. So one more car yet to be escorted. One more car is set to make its way around the track. That car being Steve Buckwalter's car double zero. And now the field chasing the pace truck and actually the pace truck had a better chance catching the field, but it is what it is. They've got to be behind. And they will do just exactly that as everybody seems to find the pace truck down in turn four. Smith, knowing he's in the pole position, will settle in and he'll await the arrival of the 23 of Lance Moss. Meanwhile, Turner goes up to the outside of the second row. Moss trying to weave his way through will now slip around the outside of Turner to get up to the car 43M of Mark Smith. We saw A.J. Maddox pull down to the bottom of the racetrack to make the what proved to be winning pass in the first heat event. Let's see what the strategy will be for the drivers now as Mark Smith was among the faster drivers early on in this one, the group that was out there. So starter giving him a final instruction now as the field will need to be side by side after the pace truck departs from the racetrack over in turn two. The lineup once again, Mark Smith in the 43M with Lance Moss in car 23 outside of him. That's Brian Gossel, 6G to the 15 of Ryan Turner. Third row has the 21B of Scott Cruder, the 92 of Matt Kurtz, the double zero of Steve Buckwalter, the five of Ryan Timms. Three more cars behind that group you see on the screen. And this start is proud of Smith. Smith did not get off to a good start. Mark Smith goes from first to third on the initial start of this one. But the yellow flag is going to come out, especially because the 10SR of Keith Sheffer is in a place where he shouldn't be. And he was nearly out of the ballpark here, but will come to rest just past the turn one gate. So caution coming out for the 10S of Keith Sheffer Jr from the outside of the fifth row. And it seems this race would have been yellowed anyway because of the start being unsatisfactory. We'll take a look at what happened to Keith Sheffer Jr. and what happened on this start now. As you see the field thundering off there, you see Sheffer bouncing around after apparent contact with the 21B. And he did come to rest. Things could have been a lot worse over there than they were. So we'll just have to check the status as is the driver concerned with what's happening on his 10S, 10, 10SR car, sitting a little low to the ground over there. So, of 
course, the tow truck made a visit into the pit area, so we'll try to get the tow truck back out. If that's going to be the situation with the 10SR field, we'll continue to parade around here as we get set for a complete restart on heat number two for tonight's racing. And help is on the way coming in through the turn one gate. We'll take care of the situation right there. Tough start for Keith Shefford Jr. as he had started back in the 10th spot racer all the way from Jerome, Michigan. Competes up in the central and south Michigan area. Ready to get a trip back to the pit area. Hopefully can stick around for remainder of the week. But right now they're going to make sure that that car is 100% what it needs to be and hopefully we'll be back out here for the B feature for tonight's night number one. Once again, thanks to our safety crews for the job that they do in helping keep this program safe for the drivers. And the crew members, crew members do a lot of work to get these cars out on the racetrack and certainly great to have the dedication that they have to keep these cars competitive. And so tough break for Sheffer as he'll make his way now back down into the pit area and begin the assessment on what's going to get that 10SR back and back to being competitive. So a quick U-turn here as the field will be coming down the front straightaway. Going to take a little bit out of their line. They'll have to going to swing to the bottom now as the turn one gate opens and the field will start to show up. There they are. Mark Smith leading them by. So the incident scene is now completely cleared up. We'll get the cars lined back up with the remaining cars into position. We'll move Mesoraca up to the outside of the fifth row. Unless he chooses to lag back and keep his inside position. So 10 cars will now take this new green. Miseraka goes actually inside the 77T of Tyler Powell's. Once again, this field taking a look. What they have to do, the front row has to be side by side. Smith wasn't quite ready to go from what we could gather here. Of course, not in the race car and didn't know exactly what happened on that one. But it's got to be better this time, or they won't let it count. That's for sure. Here we go. They got to maintain that pace, and now they keep bunching the field up behind them. They're side by side the way they're supposed to be. Moss and Smith, cars flaring from the back. Green flag is out. Tim's flaring from the back, and he gets himself up into fourth position in the 5T. He started on the outside of the fourth row, as Moss is going to do battle now with the 15. Up Turner, that's a battle for second. Smith is off to the races in the 43. Now contact between Turner and Timms. They pull apart. Things keep right on rolling. Mark Smith leads the way in the 43 to complete lap two. Good battle taking shape now between Turner. Kurtz trying to hunt him down as they go on into turn three. Right up ahead of him, it's Tim's running the high line. These drivers run in the middle of the racetrack. Now Kurtz finds something on the bottom, closes in. In that battle for fourth position, he's going to take the same line as the fourth place running Ryan Turner. See if he can make something happen in one and two. Didn't go back down to the bottom this time, but he's running middle while Turner went up a little bit higher. That's still going to open the bottom in three. And here comes the challenge from Matt Kurtz. Ryan Turner going to hold on to the spot for now. Kurtz committed to the middle of the racetrack. Kurtz is sideways. Lost all that advantage. Got it gathered back in in turn two. But he has simply lost the scent on the car 15 of Ryan Turner. Turner pulls away from him. As there's your leader, Mark Smith. Smith working it out to a six-length advantage over the 23 of Lance Moss. Smith will get the white flag this time by. Just one lap to go. Moss trying to catch up. He's going to run out of time as the leader comes up on the backside of the field. Shouldn't matter. He's going to get the checkered flag of the win. He's going to go. 
Mark Smith. While all that was happening, you see the official finish for heat race number two. Mark Smith wired to wire in car 43M. Second place running Lance Moss. By the way, Lance Moss ran a 12.956 lap in that race. Ryan Timms will take third. Fourth will go to Ryan Turner. Rounding out the top five, Matt Kurtz in car 92. Heat race number two now completed. We've got four more heat races yet to come your way. Here, the activity in the pit area beginning to intensify as we get set to see the staging area down in turn two empty out by way of the turn two gate and get us moving on to heat race number three. Here's how they're going to go. Up on the pole, the uniquely designed car number 10K of Dwayne White from Bahalia, Mississippi. Outside of him, second generation, actually third generation racer when you count Leonard, third generation racer Austin McCarl in the car number 88 out of Altoona, Iowa. Sterling Kling all the way from Tempe, Arizona, has car number 34 starting in third position. And Davey Franick, the New Jersey racer, starts fourth in car 28F. Different number, familiar name. Justin Peck in car number 20 here tonight. That's right, you heard me right. Car number 20 is Justin Peck. Max Stamball from Lima, Ohio in the 71H. Row four, a pair of 16s. You've got the 16 of Ryan Rule. And you also have the 16G of Austin Gossel. The final row will have Chase Ridenauer in car number 01 from Perry, Michigan, and Creed Kemenaw in car 15K out of Alveda, Ohio. Creed Kemenaw, one of the faster cars in this group during the practice and hot lap session. So that's how they're going to go. We'll just see if that speed is going to translate well for Kemenaw as he'll have a little bit of uh, racing to do to get up there into a transfer position here for tonight's A main. The rest of the cars going to one of the 12 lap B mains here as once again unofficially 62 cars in attendance for tonight. Our 360 heat races will be followed by heat races in the Dirt Car United CC Modified Series. We are expecting 19 of those competitors to find their way into heat races for tonight's action. This field quickly out onto the racetrack and set to go for the start of the third heat event. And once we get the signal, we'll start to see them begin to circulate from the back straightaway push off area. So far, we've seen some uh, good action as the contestant for the lead in the first race, but Mark Smith going wire to wire, leaving everybody else to battle for position on back there. And there's a look at the infamous hill, which uh, generally is uh, well populated. They did leave behind that uh, fancy uh, dining room chair that they had back here on Monday and Tuesday. You know, it's one of those bring your own, BYOC, bring your own chair. So one of the racers up there uh, joining along with one of the spectators or crew members to uh, converse regarding the situation. But, uh, you know, the only time that there's uh, not a big crowd up there usually is when somebody puts up a sign and says, beware of snakes. That's the only time that you don't get a lot of people up there. Good look at Austin McCarl's car number 88, the 34 of Sterling Kling, and also the 71H of Max Stambaugh's. These drivers going through their final checks to make sure. You can see them tugging on the belts, pulling down on the helmets, and getting set to go. Once they get the signal, they'll begin to circulate around the racetrack and get this third heat race ready to go for tonight in the King of the 360s. Great looking shots here tonight on Flow Racing. For those of you watching, welcome. Appreciate you being here supporting the East Bay Raceway Park Winter Nationals. For those out here in the grandstand area, a little change of plans. Put you out here in the grandstands on a Wednesday night. Don't forget to come back here for the Thursday and Friday activity. No matter where you're watching from, tell your friends to enjoy the final week of Winter Nationals 2024 here at East Bay Raceway Park. The signal has been given now and cars are beginning to move. Davey Frannick's car number 28F. One of the first we're taking a look at. Frannick has been visiting in the state of Florida for a couple of weeks now as he picked up some activity further south. Max Stambaugh here, another one of those West Central Ohio racers driving the 71H. 
Dan Ball is going to be starting from the sixth position. Drivers from the second row have been having some good luck so far, but again, there's some speed to be found in the back of this field. As Justin Peck is going to start smack dab in the middle in his car number 20. Again, for those who normally follow Justin, knowing he, where he takes the car 13. In fact, his souvenir trailer here at East Bay Raceway Park still has the 13 sign on it. Two drivers in this field have their own souvenir trailers here. And that's one of them right there. Austin McCarl has got T-shirts available for sale. Field quickly found the pace truck, and they'll get lined up behind it for this start of this heat event. This is heat number three. It will be contested over an eight-lap span. And again, there's a little bit of a change in the lineup as we'll check and see what's happened here to necessitate that change. Carl to the inside. Apparently the 10K of Dwayne White, even though he's pretty quick in his practice session, he's not out there and thereby forfeits his pole position. And taking a look at him. Yes, it will be a nine car event. Going to watch him now, and again, final instructions. Nose to tail means nose to tail. Don't fan out. You're going to get in trouble if you do, and nobody did, really. We're underway. McCarl's going to take the early lead as it's going to be in the outside. Kling battling with Frannick. Peck right back there in fourth, watching that battle for second now as Frannick's going to take the position. Kling will settle in. Peck will take a look to the bottom in the 20, and Justin Peck will now take over the third spot. Stewart Kling up the racetrack, opens it up for Max Stamball. Stamball in the 71 will power away down into turn three. All chasing your race leader, it's Austin McCarl in the car 88. Chase riding now in the 01, trying to get in the mix, but here's your race leader off of turn four in command of this one. Keeping it up in that second groove, takes it off turn two strong, keeps the momentum down the back straight away. The 16 of Ryan Rule now facing a challenge from Creed Kemenal on the 15K. Kemenal looks at the bottom side, will slide right up. Michigan versus Ohio in this one. Kemenal trying to move his way up. He was started deep in the field, would have been the last spot. Turns out ninth was the last spot. But Carl running with no threat to his lead right now. He's just got to do his thing coming off turn four. Frannick's a good distance back. Davey Frannick just 1.5 seconds behind right now. He's in second place right there in that red, white, and black car. He's got a good lead over Justin Peck as the white flag comes out. One more lap for your race leader. That is the car of Austin McCarl. McCarl in the 88 hustles into turn three. He'll bring it on by for the checkered flag and a heat race win for Austin McCarl. McCarl, a two-second advantage over second place Davey Frannick. Still battling back as Rule will take that spot over Kemenal. That was a battle for seventh position. There you see your race leader. Good job for the 88 of Austin McCarl. McCarl on top, Davey Frannick second, third Justin Peck, fourth will be the 71H of Max Stamball. Stuart Kling able to get up into the top five with his car 34. Chase Ridenauer six, seventh to Ryan Rule in the 16th. Eighth position, Chief, uh, Creek Kevin Awe. Ninth be Austin Gossel and the non-starting Dwayne White in the 10K. So that is it. We have now knocked out three of our six heat races. We're halfway through them. We're going to have more action from East Bay coming up here in just a couple of minutes.
Welcome back to East Bay Raceway Park. For those of you in our number here, we got an announcement. The uh, main concession stand is going to close at 8.30 here. If you want any food, coffee, tea, whatever, you got a half an hour to get it done. You're in the pits, you're in luck because it's going to stay open for you. So that's going to be happening at 8.30. Make sure you get down there and also visit the Justin Peck and the Austin McCarl locations. Field is on the back straight away to get set for heat race number four. Let's see what we have in store for this one. On the pole, it's going to be Kokomo, Indiana's racer. It's Parker Price Miller, the law firm in 9P. Outside of him, Tim Schaefer, the Steel City Outlaw in the 49X. Row two to the inside, Dale Howard from Bahalia, Mississippi, with Jason Blonde from Litchfield, Michigan in the 10BR. Brandon Grubal, a Top Gun Sprints champion from Ocala, Florida, in the G6. And outside of him, all the way from Raymond, Washington, car 45 of Devin Borden. Row four to the inside, the 12S of Aiden Schmidt from Hobstadt, Indiana. Owen Dim in car 17 will start eighth in the car 17. He'll be eighth. You have Cole Macedo, the 47S from Lamore, California. And the final starting spot will be occupied by the 16 car. That's the 16C in your playbook. And that is Agency Iowa's Dustin Clark. That's a look at the uh, Macedo car. He's got his work cut out for him for sure in this one. But there's a good possibility he can take that car up front. We've seen him do it in the past. No reason to believe it can't happen here tonight. Looks like the last of the car is going to be sent off onto the grid here for tonight's racing action. Jason Blonde in the 10BR. Part of the Great Lakes series up in the Michigan area. And the field now coming after the pace truck here in the front straightaway. Ready to get the job done for tonight's. Heat race number four, four of six. We've seen success coming from the front row. Is that gonna be the case here with Parker Price Miller and Tim Schaefer? Lining up into those positions. Remember, Dale Howard was mighty quick as well, but unfortunately not as quick as those two guys in front of him. So it is going to be one to watch 